really want to spend this time focusing on the impact the conflict is having on our markets right here at home. So overall, what can investors expect? Yeah, I think they can expect to feel like Sonny Liston after seven rounds with Muhammad Ali, very beat up. It's going to be volatile. Certainly the idea of America going to war with Russia and this, this um, international unrest is problematic. But if I can just bring a, a note of optimism. First, it's it's been very rare in American history that both the treasuries and the, the markets would end negative. Um, it's only happened 16 times in the last 100 years. Also, I do like to remind people that um, do, it, God forbid there is a war from the beginning of World War I in 1914 to the end of World War II in 1945. You saw the Dow return about a, it increased by about 115 percent. Now, that included the great the years of the Great Depression. But major American industry does find a way to survive. So I would just say uh, don't bet against America, bet on America. It might be a tough year, but you won't end in the red for both the bond market and the stock market. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be very difficult um, because America, again, President Biden shut down the ability for us to build the Keystone Pipeline. We have you know more energy in this country. We could power the world. We could certainly power our allies in NATO. I think the problem here becomes a consumer sentiment, and this is how it's going to impact manufacturers and sellers of consumer goods. So first, you have increasing gas prices, you have inflation going up, you have very negative headlines, and a recent study out by Pew shows that Americans have lost confidence in each other, not just in President Biden's administration, but actually in each other. So what does this do? This is depresses their outlook for the future. When consumers have a depressed outlook for the future, they do not spend. Mm. So this is going to really hurt American manufacturing the people who produce certainly consumer goods and sell consumer goods. And so these companies are going to have to get very lean very quickly and figure out how to find some room in their margin to be able to make a profit. No, I think what you're going to see is the feds are going to begin you know, raising rates to try and get this all under control. That's going to be starting in March. We expect them to do it about four to five times this year. But this does cause a great deal of volatility. It makes everyone very nervous. It, it, it makes people, again, I go back to what does this do to the average American? And then what is the impact on business? When Americans see a future that is not bright, when they see that things are going to get worse, right? This is the interesting thing in all the polling I've done. Americans will accept a leader that is not going to make things worse. They understand maybe maybe President Biden won't make things better, but they just don't want it to be worse. Right now in the polling I'm seeing, they not only don't believe he can make it better, but he is going to make it worse. This is going to have a very difficult effect on American businesses, especially when you look at the producer price index, which is at the highest it's been since that indices was tracked. So we have a major problem here, I think, really, for American businesses with shrinking consumer spending mm. and then um, increased prices and, and, and gas prices to transport the goods. It's going to be very tough for our manufacturers. Oh, well, yeah. And also, I want to ask you, should Americans now be worried about cyber attacks on U.S. banks? And is there any way to even protect against them? Well, I always say when you ask, should people worry, is worry useful? But what I'll say is this, Americans should be aware that is a real and serious threat and demand answers from the government for how they'll handle it. I'll just remind you, in June of 2021, we had a ma massive ransomware attack on the United States. It particularly targeted agriculture. It targeted our food supply chain. Now, uh, President Biden went over to <laughs> President Putin and said, here are 16 uh, industries you can't hit, which I assume are the same ones that match up with the Homeland Security critical yeah. infrastructure. But that's a rather weak position, isn't it? So you could attack all of our other industries. Also, they came back and hit agriculture again in the right. fall. They, they, they hit them because they said they were under the more sizable agricultural um, conglomerates. Right. But this is incredibly problematic. Uh, okay. Worry is not useful. Accountability of our leaders is. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Jennifer Stefano, thank you so much for joining us. Very insightful information as always. Thank you. Appreciate being on.